Welcome back to Comic Vantage. So today's video actually just kind of fell into my lap by pure accident here. So last night I was actually out shopping and I was at TJ Maxx of all places and I stumbled across these. Five comic book grab bags. Now I haven't seen these for a long time. Um, anyone out there who's actually of a certain age or has been collecting comic books for a long time might recognize these. Back in the 90s, these things were everywhere. You couldn't go into a, a store like Walmart or Kmart or one of those places and not find these sitting in giant boxes on their end caps or by the cash registers. I mean, they were everywhere. So I was really, really taken when I saw these and it brought back all kinds of, you know, nostalgia and I just had to pick them up just to see what's in there and I can't believe they're actually still making these and this company is still around. It still has the same, the original header on this. Look at this header. It says DC, Marvel, oh actually I don't even know what that says in there. Marvel, DC, Archie, and Mirage. I mean seriously that should kind of date how long this has been and how long they've been using this bag. Anyway this is a five comic book grab bag. Um, it cost me $4.99. That's a buck a piece. And uh, I bought all three they had. Um, yeah, I want to tear these apart and take a look and see what's in here. Uh, the one actually that grabbed me was this Archie Comics, or uh, Archie Comics. And yeah, this Phantom variant for this Extraordinary X Men number one. This is actually like a $10 comic, so I'm actually pleasantly surprised with that right away. Anyway, this thing boasts a $35 value, so we will crack this open, take a look at all these comics in here. Yeah, I'll go throw them through. It does say retail, so maybe they're talking cover price. But I will, you know, price them out to what they are now through our amazing price guide that we like to call eBay. And we will find out if it was worth buying these. Well, I mean, I guess just for the fun sake, in and of itself, it's a lot of fun to buy them. Alrighty. Three bags of 15 or five, so I have 15 comics total. Start with Superman in Action Comics number 692. Better than ever. This is from 1993. You know, it actually seems to be in pretty decent shape. Pleasantly surprised. Good old Superman and Doomsday going at it there. So yeah, that's actually kind of cool. One down. Next up, Namar, the Submariner, number 22. Root of Evil. This one's actually in really nice shape. It's funny, because I was actually I had my hand across the back here, and it felt like there was a ridge. Almost like it was folded. I don't know if you can see it there, but it's almost embossed, and when you flipped it open, it's the Konami logo in here, for some reason, is embossed. Alright, so we got that. Another comic book from the 90s. It was 1992 there. Next, hey, X-Factor number 58. We're off to a good start. These are actually some nice titles. Wow, and they're in great shape. We've got some spine wear, little creases here and there, but that's to be expected with the age. But these corners are pristine. Almost like they were new old stock. Very, very pleasantly surprised. Hmm, cool. Alright, next up. Justice League of America, number 214. Wow, that's an oldie. What do we got here? 1983. This one's a little bit rougher condition. You can see we got some spotting on the barcode here. We have a corner crease there. But all in all, pretty decent. And then we have that Peter Parker Spider-Man number 89. This is a newer title. What do we got here? Oh, 98. It's actually not all that new. Got some John Romita Jr. artwork going on. I know a lot of people love John Romita Jr. I've never been a huge fan of his artwork. I don't know, there's something about it. Just 
doesn't do it for me. I don't know. Anyway, next up, Uncanny X-Men number 17. This must have been the relaunch. God, I hate that they've started renumbering these things. I mean, seriously, bring back my Uncanny. So looking forward to buying Uncanny X-Men issue number bajillion, which will never happen now. And let's see. Hey, Groot number one variant edition. It's Groot from Planet X. Well, this is actually in really good shape too. Awesome. Let's see what year. In-store convention kickoff. I wonder which store. And this is... Wow, I really can't even find a year on this thing. Oh well. There we go. 2015. So it's only two years old. Kind of surprising that's already in there. And next up, Teen Titans number 96. Oh, they're actually advertising the Green Lantern movie with Ryan Reynolds. So that goes to kind of date it there for you. Another one that's in really good shape. Adventures of Superman number 7 from 1995. Wow, what happened to Superman there? He got really old really fast. Holy God. Oh, actually it says here it's number 520. I wonder what the 7 stands for over here. 1995. Good stuff. And then we got Detective Comics from the new 52. Batman number 7. God, I love Tony Daniel artwork. That's the guy who did this for us. Alright, good stuff. Next up, here's that Extraordinary X-Men number 1 variant cover. Uh, a little bummer here. We got a little crinkling down here in the corners. No! It's actually not too bad though, considering everything else is really nice. It's a great cover. And this came to us from last year, 2016. Unless this video sticks around for like five more years. And then it'll be six years ago. Woo! I just blow your mind. Anyway, awesome there. Next up, Red Wolf number one. So these actually been all Marvel and DC. That was unexpected. I was thinking lots of little known independent stuff that nobody wanted. Also from last year. I've actually never heard of that, so I might have to give that a read. And then we have Gambit number 13. Join the revolution. That's from 2013. Yeah, these are all in really, really great shape. Hey, a Gen X number 15. Holy God. That takes me back. Joe Medora artwork there. So sad he's not drawing comic books anymore. I love that guy's artwork. Cool. It's actually an issue I already have, but hey. I never have too many. And then Batman Superman number 28. Yeah, I mean, pleasantly surprised. These are all in great shape. So, uh, like I said, they boast a $35 retail value, which, I mean, some of these were like 60 cent and dollar issues, so I don't know how that's possible. So let me go check the secondary market and see what we got. I mean, I don't think it's going to be too much. Looks like a lot of these guys are going to be dollar issues. Uh, but, you know, might be some fun reads in here. But at $35 per bag, that would mean these are supposed to total out to... A hundred and five dollars? Yeah, hundred and five bucks. Although, you know, I will give them the benefit of the doubt, because it says here, five comics. But under this little sticker, I don't know if you can't see it here, I'll do it backwards. There's supposed to be ten in this bag, and they just stuck that over top. So that means for ten comics, it's supposed to be thirty-five dollars. So we'll take that hundred and five, and we'll cut it in half, and we'll say fifty-two bucks. Sounds like a plan. All right, so I'm going to go take a look. Be right back. And I'm back. And i got to say, I am pleasantly surprised. So, let's start off with this big old stack right here. Now, these are your typical, you know, $1 comics. Don't sell for a whole lot. 
So, you know, we got our Namar 22, our Action Comics 692, our X Factor 58, our Justice League number 214, Adventure of Superman 520, with the old man Clark Kent from an alternate future. Just kidding. Um, then we got Detective Comics number 7. And we got Superman, Batman 28, and this Gen 13, or Gen X, why did I say Gen 13? This is Gen X number 15. Actually, this cover made me kind of sad, because I miss Sink. I actually loved him as a character, and a lot of people didn't like him. I loved his abilities. He was so awesome. If you don't know who Sink is, uh, he was a mutant who was born with the ability that he could sync with other mutants who were next to him, so he can essentially use their abilities while he was standing near them in proximity. And the thing is, he would actually usually use their abilities better than they could, which was insane. Uh, for example, Jubilee back in the day, she'd make little fireworks. She was kind of useless. And Sync actually synced with her once and used her abilities and made her little fireworks explode at a subatomic level, creating many nuclear explosions. It was insane. This guy was so cool. He had leader potential written all over him, and he had some staying power. And I don't know why people didn't like him. Uh, maybe they just didn't delve into his character enough or something, but they ended up, I think they killed him off, which makes me kind of sad. I think most of the Gen Xers have been killed off from back then. I think the only ones that are still around are, uh, I want to say, Mondo, Skin, no, Skin died, sorry. Uh, Mondo and Chamber? I think that's it. Oh, uh, Penance slash M, or Monet, as she's known. But she's bonded with her brother now, M-Plate, which is this dude in the background here. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're bringing back Husk, though, which was Cannonball's sister. Uh, I loved her, too. She was a great character. If you don't know her, her ability was she would actually shed her skin, and there would be a different material underneath, like she could turn herself into stone and diamond and all different kinds of weird stuff. But I guess it started playing a toll with her psyche, because each one had almost like a slightly different ability. It drove her a little crazy. And I'm pretty sure they killed her, but I don't know how they're going to bring her back, so this will be cool to see. Anyway, uh, that's enough for me ranting on that. Okay, so next up was this little stack here. Uncanny X-Men 17, Teen Titans 96, Red Wolf 1, and this Gambit 13. These are like 2 and $3 books, which was really surprising. I was actually happy with that. And now, for the best, this Peter Parker Spider-Man number 89... The I Am Groot variant, it's a in-store convention kickoff variant, and of course this Extraordinary X-Men variant cover. These are actually all $7 titles, so we got $21 sitting right here. And that's actually what they sell for on eBay. I can put these up right now, sell them for $21 total. Um, not counting shipping. And uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, that actually really surprised me, especially this one in particular. It's John Romita after I was just knocking his artwork. That uh, brings us to a grand total of about 40 bucks for all of these things for resale value. So, you know, I was hoping for, you know, they estimated 52. I gave them the benefit of the doubt. But 40 actually is not bad for a grab bag, especially considering when I only paid $15 for all of this. Um, totally worth buying. And it was actually kind of fun. And there's a bunch of stories in here I have not read. So, I mean, you have some stuff in here that's worth a little bit of money, but stuff that's really not. So it's definitely worth buying it just to read them. There's several books in here. I like this Red Wolf. I have no idea what this is, so I'd actually look forward to reading this. So, yeah. TJ Maxx grab bags. And actually, I've seen these grab bags pop up other places, too. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Walmart still gets them every so often. This is actually not the first time I've seen them at TJ Maxx. I saw them a, a while back, too. I didn't pick them up, though. I wish I had now. I would love to see what's in them. So I think I'm going to, you know, keep stopping back there regularly, maybe once a week. Or not once a week, but, you know, once every couple weeks, maybe once a month. And just check and see if they restocked them. We can hope. Because this was fun. So, yeah. Uh... If you're new to the channel, thank you for watching. Welcome. If you're you know, already a subscriber and checking me out, thanks for watching. <laughs> uh, so yeah, if you like this kind of video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. You know, like my videos. Leave me comments down below. I love talking to people. I know I say that time and time again. I really do love talking to people. So go ahead, leave me a comment. I will respond. Uh, and make sure you share these with your family and friends and your Facebook and put it up on your Twitter and every place else, you know, even put it up on Google+. I think there are still three people that use that. So anyway, like always, thank you for watching, and take it easy.